All right. Well, my name's Laurie Rothwell. Say hello if you're watching. I just wanted to come in and do a live um, quick. I usually do it on a Wednesday, but you know me. I can't stick to a schedule. All right, so here's a paint plate here with dried paint on it. This is what I was using. I have stacks of these. These are coated paper plates. Big difference between the ones that aren't coated and these, but this is what I love to use to do my paints on. All these colors. But I just wanted to show you a mini painting. So I'm giving you a mini heartbreak, not breaking your heart, but a break for your heart. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, um, I just want to give you some painting tips today. All right, so I'm getting some paints out as always. Let me scoot my computer back. Say hello if you're watching. Um, I'm gonna scoot the computer back. And paint's gonna have to be above this. Thank goodness I'm just doing a little canvas here. This is just a little eight by eight canvas. My little mini ones, I love doing these. Let's see if I don't get too much paint out. Today. So I got white. So these are the colors. You can't see them very well, but I only use five colors for everything I paint. Um, I have titanium white. I just put phthalo blue on there. Here is some bright red and it's all clogged up. I will tell you that brands of paint do make a difference on your color mixing. Hands down, it definitely makes a difference. So, if you're trying this out and you're using a different brand than what I use, you may not get the exact same results that I get as far as the vibrancy of your colors. Hi, Lori. Welcome. So I have used, this is Blit Acrylic um, Paints. That one is chrome yellow, by the way. And I got one more, ours black. Um, I have used Blit Acrylic brand. It's a student grade, which is makes it very economical. It's more of a, it's a fluid acrylic, not the stuff in the tubes. I've been using it for 10 years now, and I don't know that I'd ever switch to anything else. Every once in a while, I will do a painting for um, somebody. Uh, just recently, I did a large um, painting for um, someone that wanted a painting of their grandfather's barn, and it was on a big canvas. And I thought, you know what, I should probably use a higher quality of paints. And I got my tubes out and I started with those and it's like, no, I can't. I've just, I have become so used to these paints that I have learned how to create the things that I want to create um, and the colors I want to create just by doing it over and over and over. All right, so I have an 8x8 canvas and I painted it black myself. I do not buy pre-painted or already previous black canvases because they're just expensive and you can paint it yourself. So I've already done that. And I love to start with a black canvas because it just is fun to bring light into the darkness, I guess, would be the way that I see it. Boy, do we need that in this world, don't we? Light in the darkness. Um, so anyways, I'm going to, I'm just showing you, so I have a class coming up, and if you're local, you may have seen it, and I called it Grandma's Peonies, even though it looks more like roses than peonies, or peonies, however you say it. I've always called them peonies, but I've had other people say it's peonies. Whatever, it probably depends on where you live, right? I grew up in Kansas. Peonies is how I always said it. So tell me how you say it, with an O or an E. Um, anyways, I... Um, Schedule that for this coming Thursday. I think it's the 12th of May. I had to reschedule it for June 2nd because we are in the midst of major construction here at the house outside doing new sidewalks and steps and all that stuff to make things more accessible and just kind of updating things. And it is a mess. We've had rain most of the week and so it's pretty muddy and my husband still has things he needs to work on. So it's just, um, I think better to just wait and let me work on some other things like redoing my garden with an E, peonies. So you say it like me. Awesome. 
Well, then I'm not wrong. So anyways, no, I just think it probably has to do with where we live. So, okay, so I'm going to start with, so anyways, this is a little excerpt of this painting that I have scheduled that I am rescheduling for June 2nd. If you are local, just make note of that. If you were thinking, oh man, I want to come Thursday, I'm not doing it Thursday. So it'll be, so now my class, the other class I have in the studio is the end of May. There's a thunderstorm one that I just love. And then the peonies will be at the end, or 2nd of June. So other than that, studios close to, out, well, I have some private parties that I um, have scheduled. So anyways, not going to have classes here. And then it's going to be beautiful. I can't wait to open it. Do you know that we've had the studio for three years? And this month, my husband finished it, and I hosted my first classes in here three years ago. Boy, time goes fast. All right. And if you guys are in Heart Club, we are going to paint this in Heart Club. So hold tight. I know you guys saw the picture of it um, a couple days ago, and you were asking, are we going to paint that? And yes, we will. So that'll be in June for you as well. All right. Um, so this is a little practice for you, and I want to tell you, practice, practice, practice. I am completely self-taught with my painting, and it's just as you spend time with something, you get to know it better. Um, if you're frustrated with your paints, and I'm right now I'm using red, blue, and white. So what's that make? Purple. If you're frustrated with your color mixing, and there's bear guarding the house um, or the studio. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. You will learn. It's just something that I did not just sit down and know exactly. It just is not being afraid of putting colors together, trying it out. Some work and some don't. I felt just a little vulnerable here this morning doing this live. Um, I still feel that way even though I've been painting um, for a long time um, but I'm like oh what if it doesn't work what if it doesn't mix together because sometimes I can mix stuff together and it doesn't end up being as bright as I hoped but I also know it doesn't make me upset or frustrated because I know I can repaint anything I can go back over it so if you paint, don't give up. Just keep doing this. Have fun with it. Take time for it. That's the biggest thing is we do not take time out to do something like this because it's messy. And you probably don't have a studio where you can have your mess out all the time that you can just wash your brushes. Make sure you wash your brushes. Um, that was one thing that I quickly learned when I had my own business was I never, well, every once in a while I still do it, but don't leave your brushes in water overnight. It'll make the ends of them misshapen and all that. So make sure you wash your brushes. But anyways, I got off track here. I'm just telling you, make a space for yourself. I know it's hard when you don't have a studio like I have and you got to do it on your dining room table and then you got dinner and you got kids or whatever's going on, a husband, whatever it is that keeps you from having a space that's kind of your own. So I suggest that you keep a basket and you can get a cute little basket at Hobby Lobby or somewhere and just keep your paints in there. Um, you could get a pad of acrylic paper rather than a canvas. Um, you can get the canvas boards that are thinner so they don't take up a lot of space. And that's another mini painting I want to show you sometime is these little canvas boards and they make beautiful gifts. Um, but anyways, we'll do that another time. But just put your paints in there. And if you get the kind that I have, which I do have a link, don't ask me where it is. I'll try to remember to put it in. It goes to my website, but if you want to get the exact paints that I have, you can buy them in pints. But if you buy them in pints, you're going to be having a year's worth of painting as long as you're painting a lot. Okay, so I have all these shades of blue and red and white on my canvas. And you can still see the black, the shadow of the black that I didn't cover it as fairly dry brush I didn't cover it completely okay I'm not going to clean my brush yet but I am 
going to, let me see what I'm going to do here. This is just a smaller canvas. I'm going to just kind of give you a little sample of what I'm painting. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the purple. I guess I don't want as much white in it. If your canvas was still wet at this point, sometimes you need to give it a chance to dry. Um, I'm just trying to think what to do because of the size of this. I don't want to paint really small. I guess I won't really, I'm just creating a container for my couple flowers that I'm going to do here. Okay, it's hanging off the edge. All right. I want to go to, and I'm cleaning my brush because this is cool colors. Do you remember learning in school about your warm colors and your cool colors? Your cool colors are your blues, your lavenders, your greens, and then your warm colors are your oranges and your reds. Um, but green is also made with yellow, which is a warm color. So you gotta be careful if you go from purple to green. Anyways, if you're watching, say hello. I see quite a few of you on here. I'd love to see who's around. What are you doing today? Are you at work? Are you running errands? You're probably not running errands and watching this. But anyways, I am going to make some green here. And I just used all black, yellow, white, and a little bit of blue. All right, so I'm just going to lay. And this, I didn't wait for this to completely dry. I need it a little bit darker than that. So what I do is I create, by the way, I said I was just doing one brush for this. This is a size eight. It's called a bright, which is like a flat brush. It's about a half inch, half inch brush. And it's one of my absolute favorite brushes. All right, so I'm just kind of creating some greens back here in the background. There's no hard lines. There's no real contained spaces. This is just a really loose painting. Cleaning my brush again because I have green in it. And I'm going to go to my red again. Oh, I can't do that can't see it that way. All right, so I'm going to take red. I'm going to take red and blue, but mostly red. I feel like, so the painting that I'm referring to, I feel like it kind of looks more like roses. So let me see if I can just create this one to look a little bit more like peonies. I had to transplant all of mine um, to save them from the construction zone out here. And so they, I was reading about it. So it's a little, you're supposed to do it. The best time to do it is a fall, but I couldn't wait till fall because they would have been trampled. So anyways, I just went ahead and did it. They have little red butt or little circle buds. Okay, so this is really dark, right? So we're going to brighten this up. really need to clean my brush. I, the one thing is when I do this, so as when I talked about this painting is I want to show you how I keep by just using five colors and one brush and how I keep my painting the colors bright and without it getting too muddy looking. And so sometimes you have to give it time to dry. it is easy to let it go too much so I'm just right now I'm just using red and white this one's so little compared to my other one my other one wasn't very big but much places to play with so I feel like oh, I'm kind of brushing it with my cleaning so I'm putting some of this pink down in here 
I kind of put it through the vase here so it's kind of reflecting so um, some of the paint the colors and the flowers so I just this is where I this is not dry but I just let my brush kind of lay some layers I don't keep going over it um, that's how you can keep them bright if you keep trying to paint it over and try to blend it in that's where they get so muddy and let's just go around I'm gonna play around with my background a little bit brush did hit some of that pink and it put it in there but I like that in there so it doesn't bother me it's okay this is a very loose painting um, something I'm not dripped water on my canvas right in the middle something I've not done a lot of but I love to do it because I know I just lifted the paint up and everything it's just one of those things that it's good for us to loosen up with our painting I know everybody's got different styles that they like to paint, but I just like to try them all until I find, well, you know, I haven't found a, well, I do have some favorites, but it doesn't keep me from painting other ways too. All right, so I'm going to go back. So I had the blue in my brush. Hi, Leanna. Is that how you say your name? Is your J silent? Hello. Welcome. Tell me if I'm saying that right. I'm looking, look, not, is it Lee? Well, maybe it's not Leanna, I don't know. I like the spelling of it, but teach me. So I was in the blue, the aqua color, so I can go right back into my greens and not have to worry about that because those colors mix together anyways. I wanna put some La Gina. Oh, that's pretty. I like that name. Beautiful name. Sorry, I didn't say it right to begin with, but that's beautiful. All right, so I'm going back. So I got, um, I wanted to put some darker colors in here, just kind of in the center where the depth is. And I'm kind of stalling here because I need this to dry a little bit. I keep adding a little bit more colors around my base. I like to use my whites. I'm trying to stay off of, I love that little pink streak right there, so I don't want to disturb that. All right, let's see if we can go back to my flowers in the middle. Need to clean my brush because I'm going back from green to pink and red and green make brown. So if you, you're welcome. If you look at a color wheel and you see the colors that are opposite, whoops, I just, yeah, that's what I want. I was like, wait, the opposite of each other on a color wheel, those colors are what makes your browns. And so that's what you gotta be aware of when you're doing stuff like that, this. Like I said, you can have them in your brush, but you gotta just be really careful. My hand's in the way, isn't it? Oops, got a little streak of green in there. Try not to it in too much. So I'm just kind of thinking what's the direction, how the petals for this flower go. Q. 
Karen, how are you? So the biggest thing when you're just playing with a lot of color at once and a lot of paint at once is the dry time and the lifting up. So this is what's happened over here. It looks good over here, but over here it's like lifting up and you're starting to see the underneath layers again. And so you just need to give it a little bit of time to dry. So before you keep messing with it, oh, thank you, Karen. Um, before you keep messing with it, you just let it dry out a little bit and go work on something else. So I'm gonna come back to my greens again. Um, trying to not make a mess on my plate. I got some aqua green color or teal green or whatever you wanna call it in my leaves now. These are not peony leaves. So if you just joined us, we had a discussion at the beginning. How do you say peonies? Peonies? Or peonies with an E or an O. So I grew up saying peonies, but I've heard people call them peonies, and I don't know, which is, I think it just has to do with where you live, probably. But these are not what peony leaves look like. I think they have more arms coming out of them. But they work for now. I can kind of pull some of this out a little bit. They're just not real defined, so. This is definitely a very loose painting, abstract flowers, something peonies. Well, good. <laughs> I will continue to call them peonies and just ignore the people that say they're peonies. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of a green around that little bud. It's just kind of tipping over, coming towards us. And then I don't remember what the bases of these look like. I was saying earlier, I had to move all mine to the back to save them from our construction that's going on here outside. And so they survived. I don't think I ever finished that story. This is too wet here, so I'm gonna have to wait. They survived the move. Some of them are really leggy and really thin, and some of them got trampled in doing the patio on the back patio when they were doing concrete because the concrete buggy went right over it. Um, so I'm going to work on these flowers just in a minute. Get those just a little bit more. But anyways, so I had to move all of those to the back, and I read that you, you're supposed to do them in the spring. And or not spring in the fall is the best time to do them. So if you do them now, you may lose the buds a little bit. They may not bloom as profusely. So, but I moved them and they survived and they're growing back in the back and they're looking beautiful. So we'll see, I'll have some blooms, I think, cause some of them already had buds on them and it didn't affect them. So, all right, this is the hard part, the patience part. I am gonna put just a little pink in my green since I have some. So like I said, if you wanna streak some colors through and it's not dry, I just do very little on my brush and I just kind of lightly, it depends on kind of where you're doing it. Like here, it's pretty wet, but if it's a little bit drier, you can put some of those. different colors on top of this without messing up. You just are laying, it's like a layer type thing and you just gotta just play around. Okay, I just need it to dry so my little flowers, in the big or my big flowers in the middle. Oh, can't do that. I'm so used to having this beside me, not in front of me. I'll do this different next time I do it. I don't even have my hair dryer handy, or I would probably dry this at this point. I can probably dry brush, lift up some of the excess paint, but I do take the texture out of it, so that means I gotta put that texture back in. I lose the definition of the petals. So you can see this one's definitely lifting up to the layers underneath the darker colors. But that helps it dry a little bit faster. I just gotta give it a chance to dry and then I can come back and 
play around with it and then add some green down around the bottom. So give it a minute. It's just, there's something about color and letting those colors just be individual and not over mixing them. Um, when you're just painting with a palette of a few colors, you want to get as many um, vibrant colors as you can out of it. And it's amazing what you can do because you just, it's a surprise every time. And we need this kind of beauty in our world of just all these individual colors. And so don't be afraid of doing that. Kind of, kind of turning my brush sideways to create a little bit of these flower petals that layers and layers. starting to see the underneath because I'm pushing it a little quicker than I should. I'm also messing with that too much because it's like I'm trying to shape the leaves to do a certain thing. Okay, I want this one to be a softer pink. Peonies for Mother's Day. You guys paint this. Paint this for someone special. And don't forget about, oh, by the way, Happy Mother's Day to the mothers, but do not forget about the ones who are not mothers that feel like this is a holiday, that they're totally overlooked. Um, women are life givers in so many ways, and it isn't always through children. Um, the name Eve means giver of life. And so I know it's hard for those that maybe really wanted children that don't have children or maybe they have a, an estranged relationship with their children. Um, I just know so many that just this is such a hard holiday um, for so many. So I just want to say that no matter what your motherhood status is, that you are loved and you are worthy of honor. Um, does not have to do with whether you have children or not or children that are around you or not so just want to give you honor today or this weekend or whatever um, so paint this for somebody special that maybe you just want to you know give honor to because they gave you life in a way spoke life into you someone special a teacher or co-worker or a boss or I'm um, a friend or just anybody, you know, because like I said, we're all givers of life in one way or another, whether it's in our environment around us, in the job that we work, whether we're teachers or um, employees or nurses or just any kind of way. Um, we have pets that we love on. We have school children. We have patients. We have so many people that we have opportunity to speak life into and to just nurture and encourage and so no matter what your walk is whatever situation you are whatever category you fall under during this weekend of when everybody's celebrating mother's day i just want you to know that you are valuable you're valuable in the eyes of god and he loves you and he created you and he hears you and he knows your heart and he knows your desires and he's trustworthy. And so, um, 
happy you are worthy day. Usually I do, I'm not sure I can't, I have a garden party on this night at, out here at the studio and we got so much construction going on that I'm not able to do it this year. It's just so many, we've had so much rain that, um, where I just invited people here and we just came together and they were to invite a friend. It had nothing to do with being a mother and we just honored each other and celebrated each other. I like this blue in here. Oh, that's pretty. Still waiting for this pink flower. Those flowers are so heavy in paint that I need them to dry. And I, like I said, I could just do layers and layers and layers of colors. Thank you, Karen. Yes, I know we forget. We forget that it doesn't necessarily mean we have to have biological children to give life. We do give life in so many ways. Working in the garden is giving life. Just being kind, saying kind words to people that are hurting or in the grocery store, just wherever we're at, always we can. All right, I wanna start giving this a little bit lighter tint to it. And I'm losing more and more definition of my stuff here. Can't see the jar that my flowers are in anymore. Almost can't see my leaves anymore, but you know what? Playfulness with paints. Sometimes it's just about the colors. Doesn't even have to be anything. But I still think this is pretty. And I wanna come back to those. I cannot reach the hair dryer. Here I was going to show you. That's why I was saying at the beginning. I feel like this is a little, little vulnerable. I can't even talk now. Vulnerable, vulnerable for me to just say, here, let me show you how I keep my colors bright and don't let them get all muddy when I paint. And then it's like I kind of run into issues. And like I said, it's just the drying part of it and not working it. I love this little bud now. And I like, so adding those little bit, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> those lighter shades bringing in lighter brings more light and that's what I want to bring back to these flowers so I may I don't know you know what let me just go grab the hair dryer and dry it I was going to shut it off and just show you the final thing but let me dry it I'll get up and go do it it's not even plugged in but I'm going to dry it real quick and then I'll come right back who cares, right? You probably can't hear me because it's my phone. Another thing, usually when I do my teaching online, I have a microphone and a different camera set up. And so this is just my phone microphone and I forget. So you probably couldn't hear me because I walked away from it. All right, that's dry. Let's bring the brightness into our flowers and then I'll be done. So I'm using, I use a little bit of yellow in my red to just make my pinks pop a little bit more. Let's see, let's go a little lighter than that. But I'm out of view, sorry. not get more paint out. I'm trying to be real careful. Got a little green in that. That's all right. So I 
love using the white. It just brings my colors up a little brighter. less detailed by making it wider brush stroke. I think that's part of the reason why I don't like what it was becoming like. I was doing them too narrow. All right, so let me get some green on there. I just wiped my brush off this time because I'm okay having a little bit of pink in it because it'll create more natural shades. Just gonna play for a minute because I never feel like I'm done. I just love playing with paint when I get started. Yeah, we talked about you making spaces for this and just creating your basket of painting supplies so you can easily just get out, get something small just to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Get to know your paints, get to know how they, colors they make. Just it does not have to be anything. You can just be painting just what colors. Sometimes, I haven't done this for a while, sometimes I would just lay in bed and just visualize, almost like if I was looking at Pinterest, paint colors, combinations of colors. And it's like, man, I wish I could just take a snapshot of my brain sometimes of what I'm thinking. That way I could remember it in the morning. So like all these, um, painting palette colors that I would come up with in my mind. I just would love to have a snapshot. Hi. Okay, you're fine. Yes, come back, watch the replay. I know this is getting a little long. Totally good. Thank you, um, Legina, right? Yes, that's how we say it. Yes. Thank you, Legina, for hanging out. Um, totally stole my plate from you. strokes are just right on top a little bit brighter and brighter with my colors trying to grab the last bits of white in here and there is my peony painting just for you you enjoyed it. I love doing this. So anyways, that's it. That's our live for today. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you're watching the replay, just say replay. And um, I should have said that beginning. But anyways, you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy it. Love on somebody. I know there's, like I said, a lot of people that this is a hard weekend for them. So just find those people. Ask God to show you who needs a little extra love this weekend.